Motorola is back at Mobile World Congress, not with flagships though. What they've instead brought are two mid-range devices that feel more like flagships than ever. Say hello to the new Moto G5 and Moto G5 Plus. The more interesting of the two is the Moto G5 Plus, not just because it's a bigger, more powerful version of the device, but it's the only one we're gonna get in the United States. This will be available unlocked, it'll be compatible with all carriers, but yeah, this is really all you're getting if you want a good, cheap Motorola device in the United States. It does have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 chipset, which is one of my favorite mid-range chips, and in my really short time using this device, it does feel really fast. Beyond the really solid performance we get out of the G5 Plus, it does have a pretty decent battery as well. It is a 3,000 milliamp hour cell, it is also compatible with the 15 watt turbo power adapter, which will give you about six hours of juice for about 15 minutes worth of charging. You do also get Moto's traditional Moto action. So giving it the old double crank launches the camera and the karate chop gives you the flashlight. But there is something new to the mix and it has to do with this guy right here, the new fingerprint sensor. Sure, you can use it to lock and unlock your device and that's basically table stakes, but if you enable the correct option in the Moto app, you can actually use it to replace your on-screen Android navigation keys completely. It is a really nice alternative to having your traditional on-screen keys, if only because it gives your 5.2 inch 1080p display just a little more room to breathe. Your applications take up a little more space. In general, it just feels a little nicer. Speaking of nicer, check out this design. It is a pretty drastic shift away from what Motorola has done in the past with its G-Series. You remember those really bright colors and swappable plates. Very fun, very customizable. This is a more subtle, more premium looking Moto device. And the early reaction is mixed, to say the least. I actually really like it. It's very curved, it's curvaceous and comfortable. And you do also have a uh, pretty pronounced camera hump. It is a little jarring to see, but A, it's in line with what we've seen on the Moto Z's. Now, one thing to note though, for whatever reason, the US version of the Moto G5 Plus does not have NFC, everyone else gets it. Why? Money, essentially, is the answer. The 12 megapixel camera in the Moto G5 Plus uses the same Sony sensor that you got in the Galaxy S7. So we are actually seeing a full on flagship level camera in a device that's gonna cost you about $230 when it launches in the United States. The standard G5 might be a little less interesting right off the bat, but it is, if nothing else, a pretty solid performer. It's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 430 inside. That's an octa-core chipset with two gigabytes of RAM. This version has 16 gigabytes of storage. I've been playing with it for a little bit now, trying to throw it off its game a little bit, and uh, it's been doing pretty well. In fairness, this is a very clean build of Android 7.0 Nougat, which is what you'll get on the G5 Plus as well. But in general, this is not a bad little device. It will cost you less than G5 Plus as well. This will retail for about 199 euros when it does launch. We know it's coming to Canada, Latin America, parts of Asia, and parts of Europe. But beyond that, we don't know if and when this is coming to the US at all. My money is on it never really showing up. So these are two very different Moto Gs than what we've seen in the past, but it does feel like it's very much in line with Motorola's priorities. They're trying to craft premium devices for everybody. And while we had a lot of that in the past, a lot of the focus was on making sure that you had a device that uniquely felt your own. You do lose some of that with these new G devices, and maybe that is a loss for you, but I feel like the trade-offs and I think the lovely design kind of make up for it. There'll be plenty more news coming out of Mobile World Congress, so stay with us for a whole lot more.